Hey, it's another glorious day that the Lord has made and welcome to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about names. In 1985, a, a good friend of mine by the name of Jack Clark was traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. And we were getting about four player, four or five players back for just Jack alone. But one of those players' name was Jose Gonzalez. And three days after he got to the Giants, uh, he changed his name to Jose Uribe. And one of the coaches uh, on the coaching staff with the San Francisco Giants, his name was Rocky Bridges. And he came up with a quote that the newspaper writers just loved, and they ran with it, and they had it in the newspaper for like the next week. And Rocky said, this is truly a player to be named later. <laughs> and everybody got a kick out of it, but that, that's exactly what happened. I've been fortunate in my life to do a lot of traveling. I've done a lot of mission trips. Uh, one mission trip that I did was I uh, went to uh, Greece. We were going over to Thessalonica to help establish a congregation there. But as I was in Greece, I, I got to go to Athens. I got to go to Corinth. Uh, I went to Berea. Uh, I got to stand on the island of Patmos where the Apostle John was exiled to. And we sailed over to the country of Turkey, and we were able to go through uh, the city of Ephesus. But while we were in Athens, I got to go see the Parthenon. Uh, <clears throat> I got to stand on Mars Hill where the Apostle Paul preached the sermon. But in, in, in Acts chapter 17, I want to talk about that. There, there's a place called Agropolis, and it's a, a flat area right below Mars Hill in Athens. <clears throat> and it looks like a flea market, but it stretches for a couple of miles. It's about 50 yards wide, but yet it goes for about two miles long. And, and in this Agropolis, there was a lot of vendors there, but the only thing that they were selling was statues and, and man-made built things that were called gods and people Literally, even when I was there, they were still buying these things and actually worshiping uh, different things, whether it be Zeus or Athena or uh, the god of wind or the god of the sun, the god of rain, the god of lightning. I mean, they had a thousand and ten thousand different gods there that people could buy. But Paul was there and he was on Mars Hill, and I literally got a stand on Mars Hill where Paul preached this sermon. And in Acts chapter 17, verses 22 and 23, it said, Paul stood up in the midst of the Agropagus and said, Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious in all respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Now, Paul said that they were worshiping his, this unknown God in ignorance, but he wanted to proclaim this unknown God to them. And that ungo unknown God was the God that we know today that created the universe. But they did not know that. So Paul was going to proclaim it to them. And if we drop down to verse 30, 31, Therefore, having overlooked the time of ignorance, God is now declaring to all men that all people everywhere should repent, because He has fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom He has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer, but others said, We shall hear you again concerning this. So Paul went out of their midst, but some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Denarius and Agrippagate, and a woman named Demarius and others with them. Now Paul preached 
about God to them. And fortunately, some of them believed. But unfortunately, some of them didn't. But he preached to them about a, a God that they had really never, ever heard of. But he was an unknown God to them. A name is very important. Now, if you're a man and you marry a bride, do you want her to have your name? And the answer would be to that would be absolutely. My name is Johnny Lamaster. I married a, a lady by the name of Debbie. Uh, her maiden name was Parsley, but she changed her name to Lamaster. She's now known as Debbie Lamaster. But let me take it a little bit step farther. If you were a, a major league baseball player and you were getting ready to sign a five-year no-trade contract worth millions of dollars, would you want me to put somebody else's name on that other than yours? And the answer to that would be absolutely no. But why? Because it shows ownership. It shows who the person is going to get paid. It shows who the person is not going to be able to get traded. But if somebody else's name is on that contract, it's all going to go to them. But what about the deed to your house? Whose name do you want to be on that deed? And it goes with just common sense. You want to have your name on that deed. I want to have my name on my own deed. I want to have my name on my driver's license. I want to have my name, if I was a pilot, on my pilot license. But names are extremely important. In the Old Testament, Abram's name was changed to Abraham. We look at Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And then we look in the New Testament, Saul. His name was changed to Paul. And he's the person that we just read about in Acts chapter 17. He was the apostle Paul. But there's something about names, or God wouldn't change them the way that he did. Names are important. If we sign a check, or if somebody's writing you a check, do you want your name on that check, or do you want somebody else's name on that check? You want your name on it. It just goes again with just common sense, because you're going to be the one that's going to be able to cash that check to get the money that's written down on that check to be able to go into your bank account or to be able to spend for yourself. And then collectively for God's people, they were known as the church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. They were known as the body in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. They were known as the body of Christ in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. But in, in Romans chapter 16 and verse 16, it says the churches of Christ salute you. Now, here, I'm getting to the very end of this about how important that names are. Now, if it doesn't matter what's up over the door of a church building, what the church's name is, then could we have up over the door the church of Hitler? Why not? Could we have the church of Satan? Why not if it doesn't matter? Could we put anything up there that we want to and have it say, this is the church? But do we want to have something that is scriptural? Something that we can go to and have book, chapter, and verse for us that say, this is the name that God wants the church to have. Jesus Christ has a name. He would want to have the church named after him. Why? There's three reasons. One is because he purchased it. Two, what did he purchase it with? He purchased it with his blood. That was the price that was given, uh, that had to be given before he could own that church. He gave up his life, number three. And it just seems with common sense that in Romans 16, 16, that we would call the church, the church of Christ. Why? Because he is the owner. He's the one that bought it. He's the one that purchased it. I just want you to think about this. Can we have any other thing as a name up over top of the building? Or can we just say it doesn't matter? But always let's be biblical in what we do. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.